Hey everybody, so today I'm gonna to give you three things that you can do to get indexed on Google as quickly as possible. First of all, what does it mean to be indexed on Google? Well, being indexed means that Google has crawled your website and your pages and taken the information or text on those pages and put them into their index so that it will show on the search results. While you can wait for Google to hopefully crawl your pages, but there are actually some things that you can do to speed up that process to make sure that Google has your content faster so that you can potentially speed up the time that you show in the search results. So let's get into it. All right, so the very first thing I'm gonna show you applies to WordPress. Now, WordPress makes up over 40% of the internet, so chances are you have a WordPress site. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you follow steps one and two that I'm gonna share with you right now. But if for some reason you don't have a WordPress site and you have a Shopify store or a Wix website, or you've made a website on some other sort of platform, that's okay, just skip to step three. Okay, so we're gonna go over step one, and what I'm gonna do is pop here into a WordPress site. So this WordPress site looks just like any other WordPress site on the back end, but there's one really important thing that you need to check, and this is why this is step one. So inside of WordPress, if you go to settings, and you go to reading, there's gonna be some options here, and the very first thing that you need to make sure that you check on your WordPress site is that this search engine visibility toggle is unchecked. If you check this toggle, basically you are telling Google, do not crawl my pages, do not index my content, do not show me on the search engine. Huge problem, right? So make sure that that toggle is unchecked just like the way it looks right here, and that is step number one. The second step is to make sure that Google understands the correct site structure of your website. Now there are lots of manual ways that you can do this, but with WordPress, why would you do that? There are these amazing things called plugins that you can put into the website. And while I'm not affiliated with any plugin, the plugin that I use and that I would recommend for most WordPress users to use for SEO would be Yoast SEO. So for step number two, I'm gonna pop back into this WordPress build. And I have the Yoast plugin installed, which is why you can see Yoast SEO here. Um, if you want to go ahead and install Yoast, you can just go to plugins and you can search for Yoast when you click on add new plugin. Just go ahead and search for Yoast. And Yoast has two versions. So Yoast has the free Yoast version. And then once you download Yoast, you can actually pay for the premium. I like the premium because it does automatic 301 redirects and things like that. It just makes my life a little bit easier, but you don't have to pay for it. The free features of Yoast are enough to be able to accomplish step number two. So once you have Yoast installed, you'll wanna to go to Yoast SEO. And the nice thing about Yoast is it has a pretty intuitive wizard that will walk you through how to name your site, how to title it, um, just some of the basic SEO questions that it has for you, how you wanna be presented on different platforms such as Google, Facebook, all of that. Step number two is making sure that your site has a site map. A site map is a thing that Google is looking for, the crawlers are looking for, to be able to understand this structure and to make sure it has an accounting of all of the pages that exist on your website. A sitemap just really helps Google to have kind of an accounts and balances section of what they've actually crawled to make sure that they haven't missed anything on your website. So to make sure that that is installed correctly, you're gonna go to settings inside of Yoast and you're gonna scroll down um, to this section that says APIs and the great thing about Yoast, this is why I like Yoast, and I know other SEO plugins do the same thing as well, so you can use whatever SEO plugin that you want. So as long as you have this XML sitemaps featured enabled, what that will do is just always keep your sitemap updated. So anytime you add a page, change a page, delete a page, the sitemap will be updated so that Google has a very current version or map of what your website looks like. Step number three is actually manually telling Google that you've made a change. While automation is always best, there are lots of instances where you would want to manually tell Google that something has changed because you just wanna speed up the process and tell them, hey, I made a change to this page, or hey, I created this page, index it, start pinging it around in your search engine results and see how it compares to my competitor content. There's a few simple steps that you would wanna take. Now, if you have a WordPress site, I'm gonna show you really quickly how to connect to Google Search Console. If you don't have a WordPress site, that's okay. You're still gonna to wanna to watch this step. Okay, so inside of WordPress, there is an actual plugin that Google has created called SiteKit by Google. And what this will do is this will actually connect to your Google Analytics or Google Search Console account 
The great thing is if you do not have an analytics account set up for your website or a search console account set up for your website, this plugin will actually do all of that for you. And once that plugin is installed, um, you'll see here on the site kit that things are connected. Now, once it is connected, this next part is how you would do this for literally any website once you have Search Console installed. So if you have a Shopify store, a Wix store, Drupal, whatever, um, Magenta, you're going to go into Search Console in that account for this next step. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so once you're inside of Search Console, it is important to take a look at your overview and your performance. Now, it is important to understand that if you just barely connected your site to Search Console, there isn't going to be any data here. Search Console is different than Analytics in that it's showing you different types of data. For example, in Search Console, you can see if you're having page speed problems. You can also see here if your content is getting indexed. So as time goes by, if you're not seeing indexing here, um, this would be another indicator that you should manually make Google index it, or maybe there's a different problem happening, and they're pretty good about showing and telling you what potentially the problem is. You can also see things like Web Core Vitals, which is your speed, to understand how things are going on the mobile versus desktop. And then you can even get into things like seeing the links that your site has. By clicking on links here, you can see external links to your site, internal links. This is all just really good kind of behind the scenes SEO stuff that you would want to know. But again, no matter what sort of website you have, this step right here is how you manually make Google crawl and index a page. And it's very, very simple. So let me show you how to do this. Okay, so the very simple way to do this is just to go to your website like a front end user and just find the page that you want to be able to index. So I'm gonna click on the blog and I'm just going to pull up any random blog here. And all you have to do is copy the URL. So I have the URL of this page and I'm gonna go back over into Search Console. And it doesn't matter what menu you are on here on the left, you're always gonna see this inspect any URL at the top. So you just have to make sure that you are logged in to your website's account that you are actually dealing with. Once you're there, you're just going to paste in the URL that you want to force Google to index and hit enter. So you'll see that little thing come up and it shows that the URL is on Google. So the reason why this page is found on Google already is because this website has been around for a little while. So let's assume that I made changes to this page and I want to request Google to index this page again. So what I just did here just shows me if my page is on Google, but here I can actually force Google to re-index my page or crawl it again. So if I click request indexing, it's going to test the page to make sure that it can be indexed. And this is just gonna take a minute or two, but basically I'm forcing Google right now to crawl this page, re-index the most current version of this page. So you can see that Google gives you a green bar here saying like, yep, we're gonna index this, and this is how you would force a re-index of a page. So again, this is really important, especially if you're an SEO and you made a really important change to a page, you can speed Google up a little bit by forcing a re-index of the page so that the most recent version of the content can be added to the index and ultimately the search results. I hope you enjoyed this video and found some value in learning how to do this. And if you did, make sure that you click like and subscribe so that as we put out more content like this, that you'll be notified. Thanks again for joining me today and we'll see you on the next video.